Hi everyone. So I don't usually record an introduction to um, add to the beginning of my videos, um, but this time is a little bit different and that's because the content that you're about to watch was actually um, filmed in my salon studio on an actual client who has um, pretty bad dryness and damage from Diva Curl products. And um, we decided to record the styling session. It's over an hour long and it's full of a lot of educational information that um, typically is something that you would need to come to me in the salon to to really fully experience. And um, I decided because it's very hard for me to be in the salon in much capacity right now because of COVID-19, um, it's made it very difficult to work. And uh, a lot of people don't live somewhere where they could come see me anyway, or they can't afford to. So um, I wanted to record the video and I was going to sell it at a very low cost on my educational platform, which is on Podia, um, curlninjamethod.online. There I have a bunch of inexpensive online classes, um, tutorials that I did. But this specific situation is a little bit different. It's very personal to me because um, of the nature of her damage from the Diva Curl products. And so, um, you know, I feel very connected to everyone else who suffered from these products. Uh, it almost like it's a sisterhood kind of thing. And uh, I don't want anyone to not be able to access this kind of help. And so I've decided to put the video on YouTube and not to charge for it. Um, I'm gonna let the ads run. So you'll have to wait through a couple of ads here and there um, so that I can get at least some advertising revenue from um, Google ads, but you don't have to pay for that obviously. Um, and then I was thinking, you know, because I'm not doubled to work as much, that has affected my income, um, that I was gonna put a link to donate if you learned something and you have the ability to donate that you could donate um, and give back as a thank you for the information in that way. And then um, I spent two and a half hours on the phone this morning with a particular Diva Curl victim whose story um, really moved me and I had a lot of physical issues caused by the Diva Curl products, but um, her use of the products triggered serious um, physical conditions that have been unexplained for two years now. She has a team of doctors that's been trying to figure out why she has all these, um, all these sort of autoimmune related conditions and has all these random, she'll go into anaphylactic shock just randomly um, and it's gotten to her health to a point where she can't work and she can't, really can't leave the house right now. Um, and she hasn't been able to work for a long time. And she's such a sweet girl. Um, I call her Jay. And she just has this, you know, you talk to someone and they just have a great energy and you, I can just tell she's done her best to stay positive. And um, she was a very healthy, um, she's a fellow Capricorn, January 10th, 22nd birthday. She's um, a year older than me, 30 years old. And uh, she was, you know, in her, in her prime of her life, very healthy and doing great in her career and with her health. And all of a sudden everything went downhill at the same time that um, their others started to notice a change in the Diva Curl products and, and their well-being. And, um, you know, everyone gets affected differently because human bodies are so unique. And unfortunately, um, I think she had just a perfect storm happen in her system. And just recently when COVID hit, um, her doctors and her kind of got to a place where they were like, we, I think we've exhausted all options of figuring out what's going on. And then a couple of days ago, she found my videos and she's been using Diva Curl every single wash day. All she's used is Diva Curl since 2014 when she got her first Diva cut um, with the curl doctor in, in LA. And um, she was loyal to it and it changed and she didn't notice that it changed just like most of us didn't. We didn't notice that the company got sold two times. We didn't notice, um, we didn't think much when Lorraine Massey left in 2017, but everything's gone downhill since then. And it went very downhill for her, for her and her life was pulled out from under her. And, um, I, she deserves um, financial assistance more than I do. She needs it more than I do. So I hope that um, 
if you have the ability to give to someone whose life was horribly impacted by these products, um, whose quality of life and financial situation has just completely tumbled, um, that you can thank me by by contributing to um, to a fundraiser for her. So the link below uh, is going to go to her. And um, I hope that you guys will decide to use it, uh, whether you give a little bit or a lot of it. Um, for reference, what you're about to watch, that session typically costs $100. I'm not asking you to give $100. It's obviously not you and not your hair, um, but if you can give anything, that would be really awesome and she and I would both appreciate it. Um, in the future, once I understand better the scope of the damage and how many victims there are, and once we've proven it, I'm definitely going to set up a actual, like a fundraiser, a fund, um, to help other victims as well, um, whose lives were negatively impacted. But I think, you know, so we're not at that place yet where, I mean, a lot of people who are suffering right now still don't know it's from the products or don't want to believe it or don't, or, or truly don't believe it. Um, because their doctors and everyone else in their life has told them that it's not, that they has given them a cause that's something else. Um, so that's all I just want to say I um, you know this has become my life work uh, current life work every time I go to work I do somebody's hair who has diva curl damage this is what the sessions usually look like um, you're gonna see a little bit of trimming but not much we did the haircut at the beginning um, but I did put in the thumbnail of this video the before and after of her hair I hope that it really helps you in some way and um, Yep, that's it. So I love you guys. Enjoy this video. I hope you learn a lot. And um, thank you to everyone who's gonna gonna help improve the life of somebody who who could really use a little a little bit of help. Thanks. Bye. All right. Okay. So what I thought was really interesting um and why i was excited to talk to you and have you come in was like that first video that first youtube video where we were yeah. like something's What's up going on yeah that was crazy so that was in july of last year if mm -hmm. you believe it mm -hmm. but at that time um we didn't realize it was damage it was just like i think it said they changed because it's not working out I had told you I thought you were pulling your hair up too much. We couldn't figure out why your hair yeah. was falling out. Yeah, it was, it was weird because like nothing had changed in my routine, but I could definitely tell like the texture changed and um, like hairline changed. But and at that know. time, at that time I was seeing you like every maybe three or four months. You were getting glazes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think like we had tried to do like a a glaze on top and like a conditioner to see if that would help because it was so dry yeah well the glazes weren't holding well and that's probably from the chemical from the product too is it causes it to the hair can't really like basically it doesn't behave the way it's supposed to right. it's not really hair anymore so it doesn't hold it so it doesn't hold it yeah it's very porous so we're like having the, the problem of that in and out with water it also is in, in and out of anything else because mm -hmm. it's like the cuticle, the hair strand, it's not functioning. It's, its function is to help keep what's needed inside and, and help protect. And so the protection is gone too. Right. Um, so that was back in July. Mm -hmm. And then it was like September that the tone of everything changed. And I was like, these are toxic. Yeah. Yeah. But I even think trying to think of when I made the switch of products I would say in the summer when you first started like mentioning AG and like you like talking about that as like maybe a possible switch for people who are having issues I made the switch immediately mm -hmm. and I switched over everything took back all my product also took everything back it was used um I did my fair share of like email complaints as well um, and then switching to AG, that's like what I've used consistently mm -hmm. since that time. So I don't know. That was last summer. Yeah. So pretty like everything is shampoo, conditioner, stylers. Yeah. Shampoo, conditioner, stylers. So the, 
the natural lines, so like the apple cider vinegar uh -huh. pairing, mm -hmm. and then I was using the hair food and the recoil, mm -hmm. or that's what I'm still using now. That's what I used to sell. Yesterday. Okay, the fast food. Fast food, yeah. yeah. So when I grabbed at the AG line at Cosmo Prof, when I was like, okay. Diva's not working for me. That's where I went to return my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I gravitated toward that boost and balance combination because of apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and knowing that um, though apple cider vinegar or anything acidic actively helps close the cuticle, I knew that the cuticle wasn't functioning properly. So I was like, okay, this is says it's for cuticle function. That sounds like good. Right. We tried it out. It was better than Diva Curl. So we were like, okay, good. Improvement, yeah. But what I noticed was that it was like a plateau. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't continue to get better. Yeah, that's so. That's exactly how I feel. You know, like mm -hmm. I felt it getting better. It appeared to be better. It was feeling a little bit softer. I wasn't, you know, having as much fallout in the shower at first. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's kind of just been like, okay, this is where it's at and this is where it's going to stay, mm -hmm. which has been interesting because it's still not like what it was in its prime. Like I say like it's prime. I look back at pictures from two summers ago and I'm like, oh, my hair was so perfect. <laughs> uh, comparison is the I, death of happiness, I right? Know. We should not be able to look back like that. I know. <laughs> uh, but you know, I think it's important that we do that um, because like when we see ourselves and our experience with ourselves every day, we don't notice a dramatic change that happened over the course of months right. if it happened slowly right so mm -hmm. you said that your hair loss got better and then now you're starting to have some problems again you're still using the ag stuff currently yeah so i mean yesterday like i showered wash day and it's i'm having some scalp issues um again not really knowing exactly what it's from because it's more recent mm -hmm. uh, i would say the last couple months and dry scalp very itchy like red mm -hmm. um and to the point where like i was itching so much i was sc like scabbing you know you mm -hmm. feel like the scabs and i'm terrible i like pick at them which is awful but that's been happening and then i would say over the last couple washes and i only wash my hair maybe once twice a week um so i would say maybe the last like month and a half it's back to like literally I'll get in the shower it gets wet like I'm not even detangling in the shower or anything and I'm just my first you know one of these and it's you could tell from the root like it just here's one <laughs> <laughs> like it, I know <laughs> it just it's just in clumps yeah as if I were like the same amount of hair that typically I get after like detangling like half my head not the whole head right but, like, it's a significant amount, so I don't know what else going on. Okay, so with the original like concept of what's what do we think is like going on inside of these products, and so how do we make sure that we use something better than that that's not that? So the theory was like the the products got hot, and it was actually um, some ingredient that would be on, in the formula mm. of the product changing and releasing something into the product my theory was like something like formaldehyde because people's curls are getting so relaxed right, right. so you think like relaxer and a lot of people on the internet like to chime in and say well there is a chemical in some of the products that um can release like lye or something like that relaxer type of chemical mm. but that ingredient that they've spoken about it's not in every product and with time and seeing clients like you over the 10 months, but only in, within, within a matter of a three or four months, I realized I was getting clients existing and new who they only used one product and they severe, suffered severe damage. Right. So maybe it was just like the decadence leave-in, just the gel, just the conditioner. Yes. I was like, it's across the board. Mm. And those products didn't have that same ingredient in them. So it was actually a client who was like, when I mentioned the heat theory, she was like, what about the plastic? Maybe mm. the, maybe the plastic has something to do with it. And I was like, right, oh, because I need to get home right now and get on the computer. Right, because you hear about the water bottles and mm -hmm. how you shouldn't drink from a hot water bottle. Right. Well, so when the water bottle thing happened, 
okay, great. They're like, oh, just don't put it in your car or something like that. But what about before it got to you? Mm. So this is going to tie into my recommendations, your lifestyle changes, because the body is the temple the hair grows from. So um, it will not grow out of your head healthy and strong until the body is cleansed of the toxin that caused this problem to begin with. Yeah. And that also means though eliminating it from your life not consuming more because otherwise it's going to be a vicious cycle right? right so when i started researching the plastic thing it just made so much sense because also at the same time that these bottles started causing problems for people i noticed specifically that my a lot of my bottles would be very flimsy mm -hmm. the plastic almost kind of warped sometimes um, some had weird color going on, like in the bottom. Um, some people said the bottle, the plastic, like stained their shower, turned it like brown. And um, a lot of the pumps were defective. So Diva Curl has, I think, said that they did not change their plastics, but there could have been, a lot of things could have happened. There could have been like a warehouse fire. Like, we don't know. I, I'd like to think that it's probably, I hope it's something where nobody got hurt. <laughs> and it's something like they decided to cut costs and stop climate controlling the warehouses mm -hmm. because then they got sold in May 2017 and when a company buys a company they want to increase the profit of course sure. the formula was great so why would they change it right, right. Um, if they broke don't fix it but they can increase profit margins by decreasing costs right yeah. climate controlling is really expensive um, and the more distribution channels they sell through, the less they can control the quality of the product. Right. Right. So now we're like dealing with they Amazon, everywhere. Ulta, everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And now they're selling products more in Europe, and that's mm -hmm. even scarier. And the longer these products are for sale, the more harmful they will become. Right. So it's really scary, and so that's why I feel that it's such a time-sensitive issue. Yeah. Um, so... When you become aware of it's the plastic, yeah, it's kind of an uncomfortable awakening and an inconvenient awakening because it's gonna change everything. If you can consume it in that level through your skin, then what do you do when you ingest it or inhale it? No, that's good. My one of my girlfriends actually for my birthday, um, there I'll, I'll get you the name, but there's a place down in Tampa, and they um, they basically have like an array of products hand soap, dish soap, um, shampoos and conditioners as well, but pretty much all like body type care, mm -hmm. um, but they only do glass bottles and it's refillable. So yeah, that's like, great. she gave me like a whole set. So I have, you know, just like some body bars and then hand soap, dish soap, but when they're done, you like go back and refill them because it's more so like non-waste, but I immediately thought of like what you were saying. I'm like, okay, well, at least I've done some of that. Right? Yeah, like inadvertently, like, right? Yeah, like my hand soap is good according to these like best practices, so. Well, it's, it's great. It's so much better for the planet and mm -hmm. like, but I've always been very transparent. Like I wish I um, put more attention into the planet and that that was the primary reason I would have used this a long time ago. Right. But that's why I tell people, even if you didn't have damage from Diva Curl, even if you are completely healthy, seemingly at least, I think we're all kind of, I mean, it's better for the planet, but also we're kind of poisoning ourselves in tiny doses all the mm -hmm. time. It's just that our body deals with it. Exactly. Maybe, right? Because a lot of people, as we get older, we start having more and more health issues. And it's quite possible that over time, having the plastic water bottles and having the products and all the things, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it makes total <laughs> sense. Like, if you can think it through and sit on it, it makes sense. Um, you don't know whether it's food or hair products or whatever. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how long it's been sitting there. Right. So people have been asking me, they're like, well, what can I eat? <laughs> what can I drink? So here's fresh, the... Fresh guy foods. Guy. Right. Well, fresh foods, right? So, so think of... Think of the items that you consume. Would they show a obvious change if they got hot? And if they would, then they're safe, right? Because we would know if something spoils. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that comes in plastic and it's non-perishable, meaning it won't change if it gets super hot, right. then just because the internal product didn't change doesn't mean the plastic didn't leak into it. Right. So, um, I'm recommending only if it had to be refrigerated from the its initial creation 
and only or or frozen mm -hmm. would it be safe to use plastic um that's what i'm following but that so that includes if you smell it you're inhaling it if you put it on your skin you're absorbing it your skin is your largest organ and it is right. porous and absorbent um and you know hair i'm not even talking about hair yet right like most people are focused on their hair because we have horrible emotional baggage attached to it mm -hmm. and our health things are like can really go a little bit less discovered but and um but the thing is like i said like you know i mean i shaved my head and my hair was growing out of my head damaged already yeah. it was so i would go like this and all the front would just fall out really oh my gosh i had to change my lifestyle yeah. and my diet yeah mm -hmm. so, so then how long have you like when was that oh god like only like a month ago months, maybe month ago. yeah and it, the, ch the change was immediate a lot really? better but i also i'm working on detoxing right. those things out of my body so um i'm gonna put in the description the link to the detox video so that we don't people can watch me do what i did right. um so i did do a few different things so it's hard to say which one helped the most um, but I've now I'm now actually at a place where I'm even going to for like um, advice on detox from more like natural centric doctors because my doctor that's just not what she does right. and she doesn't um, know how to fix what's going on with me right. and a lot of typical physicians won't. Right. So um, I'm gonna you know I'm doing my best to guide everybody. Um, the things that I'm doing, they're not dangerous, so I feel comfortable sharing it. sharing it, exactly. But it would be very hard for me to know something's working for me and not share it. I would feel like I was withholding. So right. that's why we're doing this video because, um, and that's why I'm not charging for this video when I know that I could make thousands of dollars off this video, right. is I don't want a barrier, uh, barrier of entry for anyone who needs this kind of help. and. Most people, will, will, of course, would love to come here and do this, and but they just can't, and I can't mm -hmm. accommodate them anyway. I'm very grateful. For <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for you but too because you know here you are of everything that we've been through over the years, from you having super healthy hair and me just finding you in a, at a bathroom at a yeah. restaurant and telling you I want to do your hair, to you know the total waves of chaos we've been through um together so thank you for continuing to trust me yeah <laughs> it's been a journey yeah you know i want what's best for you no for yeah. sure and i trust you and then i think that's why like your credibility to me is not a question you know because i know that you're always going to share like what's best um to your knowledge and i think it's it's just it's life like things change like gotta change with them and so yeah. Thank you. And yeah. also, you know, um, now we're, we all have this level of awareness. Know that anything I'm using now, I'm keeping an eye on the brand. I'm keeping an eye on if it, it ships from somewhere mm -hmm. different. Um, so the distributor for OA, which I use now, mm -hmm. which is in amber glass, um, and it's completely made in Italy where they have, first of all, they have product right. standards, whereas we don't really have them here. Right. They have very high product standards as they've won multiple product safety and quality awards. Mm -hmm. So that makes me feel safe because mm -hmm. I'm definitely like traumatized and it's hard to know who to trust now. So um, I knew that I would no longer use products that come in plastic. I'll be happy to check out your friend's company in Tampa. That sounds great. Um, they're actually, the distributor is in Palm Harbor, which is close to there too. Um, and I've said, it's not that I'm married to this brand. I don't have to use just that. I, nothing else has checked off all my boxes and I have boxes to check now mm -hmm. for myself and for my clients. So, and the thousands of people who are heeding my every word as to what to use, right. who I have never even met. They're so important too, you know? Um, so I found a way because um, Dennis and I used to do education with a company called Bumble and Bumble. Mm -hmm. You might remember that. Um, and we worked an event in Jacksonville one time. We met a hairdresser who we then just followed her on social media. She posted that she was getting allergic reaction to the chemicals in the products mm. and that she learned about synthetic fragrance and synthetic colorants and how bad they are for us. Away does not have those things. So she went to work in a salon that carries this brand so that she could take better care of herself too. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna look into that. And then I got results with 
the shampoo, just the shampoo alone, like immediately I was like, I, I had stopped washing my client's hair because I was like, I can't, it's, yeah. it's worse every wash. wash. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Right. And I don't want people to spend their time or money with me on something that's not helping them. Let's sure. do that at home for yourself because I don't feel comfortable charging for it, you know? Um, so I cried when I washed my client's hair for the first time with this product because I was like, I I'm can really, help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, Aww. my God. I was just like. Huge weight off your shoulders. I was like, I'm going to wash your hair again. Right. I was going to say, you're probably like, make sure it's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I gave her the rest of the product and I said, she lives in Gainesville a few hours away. Um, and she's someone who had gone from low porosity from drugstore products to healthy hair using Diva Curl That's to high porosity damage. Oh, yeah. Which low porosity is easier to fix. So low porosity hair, it's a resistant cuticle. Once you get it open, you get products and it holds it. But with this high porosity hair with a cuticle, it doesn't function at all. It's just like, we, we need to basically give your hair like a bionic arm. Mm -hmm. So oh, once I, obviously once I liked that, I was like, okay, I'm buying everything and I bought mm -hmm. everything. And then COVID hit and I couldn't use anything for a few months because mm -hmm couldn't do anybody's hair except Dennis. <laughs> and his hair is probably flourishing. <laughs> it's, yeah, his hair is doing great. Um, and you know, he's found his go-tos at this point and um, I'm grateful to be able to play with things in the salon again because we don't spend all of our time washing his hair, believe it or not. <laughs> you don't? No, no, we don't just play with his hair all day. That would be great, but I have to let him have a life too. So, um, but he's been super, super helpful and I'm so glad he didn't cut his hair off with me mm. in Did solidarity. He, he thought about it and I think that he somehow had this feeling of like, we might need my hair <laughs> for something. Right. And we did, I, all the um, Curl Ninja Method classes were for, filmed using Dennis as a model when we couldn't go to work. Right, so that's awesome. It, yeah, it definitely paid off. Oh, I definitely right. felt some type of way about it at first. I was like jealous, you know? Yeah. But um. You know, it's coming back now. Looks beautiful. Look at my little curls. It looks beautiful. It's it's like looks so much curlier than the last time I started growing it out. So we'll see. This will be, in my opinion, this is the first time I'm growing my hair out actually healthy. Right. So this is where you'll actually get to see. Who knows what, what anyone's happens. potential is when you cut out right. like the toxins and stuff. You know. Right. Um. Let's get a fresh start. Yeah. So that being said, though. Most of what I do here is help people who don't want to do this mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, try to rescue the hair. So um, you did also mention you're having some scalp issues recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that can definitely be connected to, I feel that those little bits of those toxins in these products, it's like, have, have you ever heard of developing like a hypersensitivity to something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it happened to me with bleach. like dumb ex-boyfriend poured straight bleach all over the floor my nose was bleeding that's how um, he decided to clean i don't know if it was intentional torture or not but right. um after that I, all i had to do was be in the presence of like a cleaner with bleach or something and yeah. i would get sick yeah um and i still have that issue like if it touches my skin it like flares yeah. up um so i do believe that if you're someone who was impacted by the products to that extent to where you have scalp issues or hair loss that your body is now going to be more allergic to those chemicals right because it learned that was bad, this is bad. yeah you know, let me try and alert this person <laughs> right That's allergies cool. are literally just your body deciding to get something out sometimes it's right. it's set it's not sensible like peanut butter and but you're still allergic too bad your body decided it doesn't like that but you would think that a, like a carcinogenic chemical, a horrible chemical, everyone would be, have eventually an allergic reaction to it because the body does not like it there. Right, it's trying to push it out. Right, and unfortunately a lot of us experienced symptoms like that with no explanation. I literally once tried to wash whatever was on me off in the shower, I was covered in rashes. Dennis took pictures, my hair is dry because I wouldn't wash my hair because of, of course it's not my hair products. And that was the cause. My hands were covered in rash from wow. touching my hair. Mm. My chest was covered in rash from touching this necklace that I was wearing. Right. But of course, we were like, it must have been the necklace. Right. It wasn't the necklace. We got tested and it wasn't the necklace. So, so how do we get you back on track? Right. Yeah. 
Um, we're going to start out with washing with Sebum Balance Hair Bath because the rebuilding hair bath is what's best for your hair, but it doesn't have scalp healing properties. So to get your scalp healed, we need whatever we need to fig the key to figuring out what to use is figuring out what's wrong. Mm. And that means you're going to, in the beginning, need more than one shampoo Got it. because the, their shampoos are actually the most transformative of any of the products. So, um, it's, that's really like the diet. That's where it all begins. Right. Um, so we're going to use even balance on your root area and I'm going to work the rebuilding hair bath through your hair. Got it. Once your scalp feels better, you can just use the, one. Just use the rebuilding. Yeah or you can start to incorporate the micro-stimulating hair bath. That's for hair loss. It's amazing, it helped my bald spots fill back in. So I'm sure everyone's very eager to jump on that and start using it, but it's got peppermint, it's, it's irritating if right. you have a damaged scalp. Right. So the scalp has to heal first. Makes sense. And then as far as doing a mask, we're gonna do the rebuilding mask. Um, the rebuilding mask though is, does have a little bit of weight to it, so for anyone who has super fine hair or like really does not want any weight to their hair at all, the after sun is the substitute that I recommend because it's silicone free. There's nothing wrong with the silicones in OA. They're super high quality and they their presence allows their products to protect from further damage, protect from the sun, make your hairstyle last longer. Right. But for those who have, and they don't build up because you wash your hair. Mm -hmm. um, but those who have super fine hair, that weight just might be unpleasant to them. It's not bad for them. It's not dangerous, right? It right? makes the hair feel heavy or... Right. Just not what they want. Right. So um, that's the alternative for that. Okay. Conditioner-wise, because masks you're not going to use more than maybe one to two times a week. Some people like to use a conditioner too. The two conditioners they have are frequent use and smoothing and what I've in my experience the frequent use is the more hydrating one um, and but it, everything has to be massaged through so I have a video that I'll link in the description too of me massage washing Dennis's hair okay. in the shower it's embarrassing but you do what you gotta do right. you know just glad phones are water resistant now um, so that's what's gonna get your hair back to health the internal changes the external changes we're going to cut out the plastics as much as you can mm -hmm. um but really it it's it is a ho holistic approach it's yeah. all the things it's not we can't just skimp here or there and get the it will it will impede on the results happening fully or as quickly and so um it is uh, time to like reflect and take a look around your house and your fridge. Um, Corn. Yeah. So I'm still on that journey. I'm still every now and then finding something that I that I missed. Right. So, but I but I want you to be hopeful because um, here it is like evidence that it works. So, I a human body is a human body, and they are very similar in what they need. Just like hair is very similar in what it needs. So I would like to believe that if we are all kind of poisoned in the same way, that we can get healthy in the same way too. So, okay. Any That's questions funny. so far? Um, no, sounds good so far. Okay, cool. So we're going to do our own thing and wash and, and whatnot, but then we're going to have everybody join us back to go through all the styling because that will be very informative too, because for now it's like, all right, what, what special considerations does this kind of hair have? Because right. it's not, how it used to be. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that all taken care of. Sounds good. Let me you show your hair a little bit real quick. Okay. So it's definitely improved a lot. Um, the density is, is starting to look better. We can see a lot of little short pieces, which is, you know, it's new growth, but unfortunately it's not healthy new growth because you haven't made those internal changes yet. Um, so it does feel kind of rough and bumpy the way that the damaged hair feels, but that will still grow or we might, it might just kind of get rid of itself. <laughs> the hair, I do notice that the hairs that come out, um, the most, they are the most damaged seeming hairs. They're not healthy looking hairs, you know, for the most part. Um, so you said you washed yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
yeah, I can, your scalp's a little warm and I can see a little bit of, a little bit of flakes. Dandruff is very confusing um, because, but dandruff is actually uh, typically caused by bacteria. Now your sebum layer on your scalp is supposed to protect your scalp from bacteria, but um, the Diva products strip that, that layer away so you can get dandruff and dry scalp. But I think what my, in my experience, um, the purifying hair baths from Away are not good for someone with a damaged scalp. So I'm ha that's why I recommend the sebum balance. Um, and then you don't really need to worry about what the whether they're they're uh, dandruff or dryness because a balanced scalp is not going to produce either of those things, right? pH imbalance is what causes most scalp problems, um, and chemicals definitely induce a pH balance. They're not supposed to be there. Okay, we'll be back. Yep. Moving forward, so we did our, our wash and our mask, did a little bit of dry, dry detangling first just to get some of those bigger knots out. Um, and then really important was that we worked the hair bath through, massaged it through and detangled with the hair bath first, fully rinsed that out and then put on the mask, smoothed that through, wrapped it up and we let it sit for 10 minutes and then just fully rinsed it out. And that's all we've done so far. So just, and then I towel dried just by squeezing the hair like this with a microfiber towel. Looks like I need to move this a little bit. Now that I'm standing behind you. And so the hair, your hair is still damp. And just from like initial observation, right? I don't know about you, but when my hair was really damaged, it was like, even when it was wet, it looked, it was like someone rubbed a balloon on my head mm -hmm. <laughs> and the hair would start to dry really fast, especially in the worst areas, which often was like the top. So what's your initial impression of it just wet right now? I, I don't even know if you heard me, but as soon as I like walked over here and put my mask on, I was like, it looks different already because it's, okay, it's awesome. not, it doesn't have that. Like the only word I could think of is like frazzled, like effect where I guess the way you described it, like the balloon rubbing, that's kind of what typically happens. You just start to see a little bit more frizz at the top. Yeah, almost like static, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, and we don't really know what lies in the hair that makes it do that. Um, that wiry kind of texture, almost like a steel wool kind of mm -hmm. feeling to it. Those are the same texture and strands that will knot up on each other, almost like with an electromagnetic force. They're like, try to pull them apart and they like go back. Mm -hmm. um, mysteries of science, you know? I, I'm, I'm like, it's fascinating in like the worst possible way. Right. It is genuinely fascinating. It is. Um, but well, what's important is that we get the hair to look, feel, and act like hair again. Will the curl pattern be 100% what it was pre diva curl damage? Some people's gets closer to that than others. I think um, it's harder for those who have really tighter curl patterns to get truly back to that when it, until it's growing out from the head like that. The hair, it, it can't be helped by the internal things we're gonna change. Once you can see the hair, it's no longer living. The cells um, of your hair and your nails are actually um, dead cells. They just act like they're alive, kind of like a rug that absorbs water and it gets heavier and changes color and swells. That's how hair, what hair does, which makes it seem living, but it is not. Mm -hmm. So what the hair needs has to be topical treatment to make it as close to being healthy hair as possible. And then we take care of ourselves internally, as you already talked about, to produce new healthy hair that doesn't need rebuilding mask and rebuilding hair bath, right? Um, so taking a look at it with nothing in it right now, it feels soft. It's dripping a little bit on the ends, um, but it's not like drying up quickly. The ends will drip because the water is going to run down because of gravity. So I can take a little bit more water out of the ends, but um, because we towel dried a little, it's not super, super soaking, dripping wet. It is starting to dry first. So this is how we can see where the most damage is. 
um, and where we need to like maybe focus our styling on the most is where it starts to separate and become frizzy the fastest. So here, right around the hairline, we have a little bit of that. See that separation mm -hmm. here? Um, and so what we do in our styling process is keep a water spray bottle on hand so that we can add moisture because moisture only comes from water. It doesn't come from product or oil. It comes from water, but the styling products have water in them. They deliver moisture. They help it stay in the hair, but the moisture is water. So you can always add more moisture by adding more water. But, and the but is that when you have hair that is prone to doing something you don't want it to do, like separating like that, the longer the product takes to dry, the harder it's going to be to get control from your style. So if we add too much water, it's gonna take too long to dry. And especially if you don't just sit like a statue until it's dry, it's more likely to get messed up. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So we need the cast to set quickly, which means we don't wanna use excessive water, but we also don't want the products to be too heavy because also what the Diva products do to the hair is they break down the texture and make it more fine. So its capacity to hold things inside is less. Mm -hmm. So if we load it up with heavy product, I mean, maybe it'll stay clumped, but it will be very small and heavy. Tell me how you like your hair to look when you style it. I like it to be full, voluminous, um, definitely like bigger in the front and in the top. Um, obviously, I I prefer like the defined curl look. Cool. So there's hair volume and then there's curl volume. And hair volume is like the total volume of the hair. Like imagine if you drew an outline around it, mm -hmm. how big is it, right? And then curl volume is the volume, the size of the individual curls. So because you suffered hair loss, you suffered breakage, there has to be some kind of compromise because there's only so much hair in the head, mm -hmm. right? So we, we're gonna give you definition by using product and technique to create clumps, but we're gonna make sure they're not too big of clumps. Curl clumps, curl right. families, whatever we wanna call them. Um, Cause that way we can get some hair volume too. The more total pieces of families that we have, the more total hair volume there's gonna be. And so it's important that we get that in our product application and drying process. A lot of people do the clumpy thing and then they try to get the hair volume thing once it's dry and it doesn't happen because however it dried, it's gonna to wanna to stay like that. Right. Or it gets frizzy. So that's how we get that balance. So let's talk about product selection. Um, the OA brand has a lot of styling products uh, they have one product that's labeled for curly hair. It's called Curly Potion. I really don't use it on anybody because pretty much all my curly clients have Diva Curl damage and it doesn't control their hair really. So if someone has healthy curly hair, I'd say Curly Potion's great. It's got a lot of slip, um, but it's not a heavy product and it's not a controlling product. And I think at least in America, we're used to um, anything that's labeled curly being heavy. Mm -hmm. And I think in Italy, that's like, not how they think about curly hair. So instead we have to look at the other products um, and see what do they do instead of who does it, what's it labeled as being for. Sure. And I played with them a bit, so that helps me decide and guide everyone. So I also have a product guide on my website that I'll link in the description to that basically I wrote out my own version of the description of each product. And then you also see the company's description, but mine kind of helps apply it yeah. to our thinking. Right. right. Okay. Um, so we're going to use the volumizing root spray. This spray is um, got a, like a top that helps you get in close to the root. Oh, this one's not working well. Okay. Okay, well that's never happened before, but obviously it happened because we're on video. <laughs> Naturally. Right. Okay, well, if that happens, you contact OA and, or Simply Organic Beauty and let them know that your thing didn't spray. Um, 
I think that was one that the hose came off and I reattached the hose myself and I probably did it wrong. So great. Okay. So if you can get in close to the root with it, it's going to give a little bit of hold so that when we're styling for volume, it's more likely to stay up. But also more importantly, it's got a bunch of natural ingredients that are really good for scalps to help them produce healthy, strong hair. Um, and so it's not irritating at all so that you have some scalp irritation. So we want to stay away for now from things like densifying remedy because that could irritate, but they do have a, a treatment called vivifying remedy, which is for sensitive scalps. So if you wanted to do a spray scalp treatment at home, that's the one I would recommend. But this is kind of like a leave-in treatment too, that also adds to your style. So it's like a two in one. Yeah. So we're going to spray that all over the root area. Um, and I don't want the roots to be too wet when I do that because there is water in this product. It's the first ingredient, which means it's the largest percentage of the percentages of every ingredient is water. So if we dilute it with a lot more water, it's not going to work as well. Mm -hmm. So the roots could be completely dry when you spray this on. Um, and then we're going to apply boho pomade. Bo boho pomade is a cream styler. It's my dupe for wave maker, but it's very concentrated because it's a pomade, so it's thicker. So you use less than you would. Wave maker was like a whip. Mm -hmm. This is the opposite of a whip. So you just have to use less and really spread it out in your hands. Um, and then we're also gonna use a little bit of glossy nectar, which is helps with rebuilding damage, uh, which we know we have. And it's also gonna help create a seal and it does reduce drying time a little bit, which is good. And then we have the last thing, which is in an unmarked bottle is BioRich Water. And that's because I do, this is one product I'm able to offer with my refill program locally. So I refill these bottles out of a big one. Um, they don't offer that for all of their styling products. I think only this and um, the Sculpting Mist. So um, that's why it doesn't have a label on it. This is going to give you, I use this as a makeup setting spray, mm -hmm. room mist. Um, it is going to give uh, even more protection from the elements. And we're going to use it like when we're done, mm -hmm. anywhere that we see there's still some frizz. Okay. It's very hard to get it right the first time to like finish st your styling process and have it exactly how you wanted it to turn out. That's why I don't spend five hours styling the hair because I know I can fix it quickly at the end if it did get a little bit frizzy somewhere and it's likely to happen even if I spend the five hours on it. Yeah. Curly hair was supposed to be low maintenance. Wearing our hair natural was supposed to make our lives better. <laughs> so, that's, what said. <laughs> that's what they said. Like I know. That's <laughs> funny. A girlfriend of mine is like looking to transition like and stop relaxing her hair and she was like so like it's like it's easier right than like blowing it out and i was like uh do you want the honest answer or i don't know well it's worth it though it's it's worth it um once we can get everything back on track to being healthy yeah um damaged hair is high maintenance so right now everybody who used diva curl their hair has like special needs and considerations whereas it didn't really before. Like I used to use just low poo delight, no conditioner, no stylers. And I was like, had jerry curls. I was like trying to separate them because right. they were so shiny and I wanted it like fluffy. So it's a bit of a, it had to be like a retraining of the brain. I'm so grateful I didn't just do curly hair because when I was doing everything else, I learned a lot more about severe damage and what that looks like and how it acts. Whereas when people used to come to me with the diva cut and damage, they were usually coming and just cutting the ends off and mm -hmm. then it was gone. But this damage goes all the way to the root and it's not the kind that you can just trim the ends off and it's gone. Right. So, um, but the good news is that because it damaged our hair, we learned about how much products can affect us internally. And so now I think we're all gonna live longer, health, healthier lives because we made this switch, right. which ignorance is not bliss. You know, not yeah. in that situation, not with your health. Okay, so I also love Bio Rich Water as a refreshing spray. Okay. Yeah. Here's the next one. Um, okay, so we've been letting your hair just kind of air dry a bit. Um, anywhere that I need to re-wet it, I will. But little known fact, 
You can add the water after the product if you want. They're all going to the same place if absorption is the goal of the product. If you put it on and it doesn't absorb, you can then add water and work it through. Okay. It can be reversed. So I'm gonna section you, I'm gonna section the whole kind of bottom of the hair. And when I do my section, I actually go around and when I get past the ear, I go lower because in the back, there's a lot more real estate vertically because we don't have ears. Mm. Um, so what we want is sections to work with, with that we can see through, but that there's enough hair there to form curls. Right, so um, see through meaning like, if, I, if all I see is hair, then that's too thick of a section. So that's easy to get in the front where there's ears and where most of us suffer the most hair loss uh, around those temple areas and the hairline. When we get to the back, I'm gonna go lower. So I'll be end up taking one, one extra section in the back so that we make sure we do concentrate on like the crown area because uh, the poor crown. <laughs> It gets hit by, you know, the sun and these things that like healthy hair has a cuticle that does a really good job protecting our hair from damage from the sun. But when you take away the protection and you live in Florida, especially, mm -hmm. bam, we're right. right on top. So it needs some TLC. That it does. So I'm going to go through and just smooth and detangle a little bit. I like to do this a little bit before putting product in um, so that I can be mindful about how much I'm putting the product and where. If I'm using it to like detangle, then I might put, I'm just not, I'm not a multitasker so much. I kind of like to do one thing at a time, especially if I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. But if you find that you can do this part with the product on your hands and it works out great and it's faster, then more power to you, you know. but I want to get the tangles out. So the reason people like the style with a brush is because it tangle, untangles everything and they don't do the same amount of effort with their hands that they get with the brush. But if you have deeper curl damage, you do not want to be putting a brush through wet hair because it will just come right out with it. So of course I'm going to go through and spray the volumizing root spray. And I'm going to go in here on the hairline and then just follow my part. I love how everything smells. Yeah, it smells so good. All that scent is natural. It's just refreshing. Their skincare line is actually almost smells like nothing because they won't just throw essential oils in there if they're not like something that's supposed to sit on your skin for a long time. And so they have like almost no fragrance at all. And But I've never, I've always re reacting, reacted negatively to skincare products. Right probably because of the fragrance and stuff, so I've never used them. But like, same thing with their skincare, it's like a dot is enough for your whole face and neck. I, they last forever and no irritation. I'll actually give you a little, you can take them so I don't forget. It's a little beauty, beauty book, so you can learn about that. I'm not an esthetician, but I am a user of the products. Glossy Nectar. So we're gonna actually cocktail these together and cocktailing is when you mix something together before you put it on the hair. Okay. Layering is doing one than the other. Um, so some products don't cocktail together well, so they need to be layered and you can test that by just rubbing them together in your hands. If they form balls, like white balls, then don't mix them. you can still use both. Right. You would apply one, yeah. wipe your hands, then apply the other. So I'm gonna do one pump of glossy nectar for about eight, let's say that's a dime mm -hmm. size amount of bubble pomade and then I'm going to rub it in my hands and as you can see it just forms a smooth textured cream mm -hmm. and I'm going to take a little section here and I'm going to massage it through and then I'll see if I'm going to add water okay. so I'm squeezing the hair in my fist and I'm pinching it together and I call this like the damage free Demon brush effect because mm. it lays everything down and people get freaked out because it looks straight right 
but it's damp, so it's like silly putty right now. It's not what it's gonna look like when it's dry. Right. Not till it's 100% dry is it set in place. And then we're gonna use a little bit of bio-rich water. And that's gonna add moisture, right? So I'm probably not gonna need to actually add spray bottle water. And then what I do is I like to lift the root, cup the ends, and see how the curls are forming. So I'm basically studying your hair with this section. And this takes a little more time because I'm gonna see what happens. I might need to restyle it a little bit. Um, and then I'll know how your hair acts and be able to go through the rest. But what I see there is like literally to me perfect. Um, I'm seeing smooth clumps, mm -hmm. but there's like five or six, not just like one. So we're going to be able to get that definition and that volume. Um, as far as strand separation, I like I like that term is better than frizz because frizz to me I'm like what because it's curly it's frizz it's not flyaways like right. you know straight hair is like flyaways and curly hair is frizz it's like this derogatory term like this monster yeah <laughs> no it's just separated strands right um, once they bond together they're not separated anymore so. Mm -hmm. Just tiny, some little, little pieces, not enough that we're even going to see it. And I know that if I try to eliminate them completely, you're going to have no volume. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to keep it moving. I'm going to move on to this section here. So I like to take a section that I can like really fit in my hands, right? So it's not super, super wide. Can you go through and do everything at once like that quick? Yes, but that's something that you're going to do with practice over time. Me, I'm every single person that comes to me now, like I treat their hair like it's the very first time I've ever done it. Your hair is not like it was the last time I saw you. Right. So I prefer to work in small sections and be a little bit more deliberate, especially when we're educating in the process too. So this section is pretty dry. So what I'm gonna do is instead of doing the bio-rich water last, I'm gonna go ahead and spray that one first. They're all going to the same place. And then this section's a little thicker, so I'm gonna do double amount of the first section. I'm gonna take, I call it a fingertip amount of mm -hmm. boho pomade, a pump of glossy nectar, and the same thing. I like to get all the way up close to the root because that's what everyone wants, like, you know, their hair to curl all the way to the root, but they do all their styling at the bottom. Yeah. Scrunch, 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 right? Yeah. Okay, that, that's maybe gonna get the ends, but it's not giving any attention. So a new it. smooth, like, are you using your thumb to sort of press in along the way? Yeah, I'm like, it's like my hand is kind of open and I'm pinching it okay. with my thumb. And if when I go through with my fingers like that, I squeeze them together. Mm. And I like to support, so I'm not pulling at your scalp. We do want to take care of your follicles too, and that means not squeezing the crap out of them. And then I like to go and define the ends, almost like, you know, when you do that like with a ribbon or something. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take the top, cup the bottom, and drop it down. And if it all clumps together too much, like that all just wanted to be one thing, I just gently separate them. Okay. When you do the back, it's easiest at home just to do a strong lean to the side and pull it forward like that. Because mm -hmm. if you do it up, you're not gonna get that focus all the way to the root because it's gonna be traveling across your head and that's gonna really straighten out that bottom layer. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have different dry patches in your hair too, um, just because damage doesn't happen equally, uniformly. So if I see like up here, there's a little more strand separation than I want. I'm gonna go in with that bio rich water and just add a little bit more. But I can also do this once we're done styling, just like quickie restyle any parts that um, need a little more product. Okay. I'm keep it moving. Do you have any other questions so far? No. So far, so good. So far, so good. Makes sense. It does everything that smells good but so like some people they should look at the ingredients because if they hate like the smell of 
cinnamon and it has cinnamon leaf oil, then maybe that's not a good product for them. Right. But it's all natural um, and it doesn't linger. So like Dennis wasn't liking sculpting mist because he didn't like that it. it smelled like licorice, but it doesn't hang out in the hair, that scent. So it's not like because it's in your hair, you're going to smell it all day. Right. How long would you say like a, a style would last? I don't well, know. It depends on how you keep up with it, but... Well, it's not just that. As hair gets healthier, it's going to last longer. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like a little bit of refreshing is something that most people should get comfortable doing because it's easy and quick. And really, it's just I would take like a little bio rich water spray where needed and like work through my hands. You could add a little glossy nectar if you want. It depends. Um, but the products are very light and so there's ne never going to be like a feeling of my hair is dirty right. it needs to be washed you know and just adding water can help everything resurface too but i would say you should be able to in the beginning i would wash your hair and do the mask and everything at least two times a week okay because otherwise you're like depriving your hair of right. progress that was going to be my next question was how often do i wash exactly so like there's no rule when hair hair is healthy but when you're on a treatment plan I would do it at least two times a week. Right. Um, I wash my, I'm treating my uh, bald spots with micro stimulating hair bath and I wash my hair every other day. Okay. And I haven't had any dry scalp, any discomfort. Okay. Obviously I have very short hair, so my styling process is a little easier. Some people yeah. don't want to wash their hair because they don't want to style it, but you understand why. Yeah. My other question would be, um, like let's, would you recommend, I know you were just saying you don't want to deprive your hair, but like let's say I do shampoo and the mask, but mm -hmm. I don't really have plans to leave my house already, thanks to Corona. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> is, it, is it okay to just not put additional products in it if I'm treating it with just the shampoo and the mask, or should I try and keep up like the same routine? Um, so like give it a break, like give it a break or not give it a break, yeah. The styling products are also treatments. Okay. Like every, they literally don't have a product that's not also a treatment. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would add a little bit of something, even if it's just a little bio rich water, because you don't want to like waste your products. Right. Um, and you could dilute it with some water if you want to. Um, but I would leave something in, especially because it's offering protection, even from just when you sleep on it. Okay. I mean, even with quarantine, please like leave the house, go for a walk. And okay. if you're going to do that, it's good to have UV protected products in your hair okay. because our, our hair is basically like exposed in a way that it wasn't before. Right. The Sun Protective Elixir is also an awesome product that I'm just now starting to play with. It's kind of like a super light oil. Mm. Um, and it it says that it even protects your hair if you go in the ocean or chlorine. Mm. And I haven't had any issues with build up with that either. None of the products like won't come off when you wash them. I've right. never I haven't had anyone share that experience with me of feeling like their hair is dirty or something like that. Right. Now soup people with super fine hair should not use products that have silicones high in the ingredient list, meaning towards the beginning of the list, just because they'll feel, they'll feel that it's dirty because it'll feel very weighted down. Um, that's also just like a personal preference thing though. It's not like it's hurting their hair. It's just not that clean feeling that right. some people are looking for. So boho pomade really has like a bounce factor to it, which is awesome. Um, and then we add a little extra shine because it's more of a matte product. So it's more of a natural finish, not like a glossy finish, but using a little bit of that glossy nectar and the bio rich water is gonna give us a little bit more shine. Now super healthy hair has so much natural shine and you could use a texturizing product and it's still gonna be shiny. Right. It'd be hard to make it not shiny. That's not our current situation. So I'm going to do the back top and then we'll do the top top. So the back top is like from the top of the head okay. back. So I like to take it across. I think that top part gets neglected a lot because it's always like the center of a section. Right. It's always the middle. Right. Always the bridesmaid. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. So. <laughs> Never mind. 
it deserves to be the center of attention is what I was trying to convey. <laughs> All right, so I'll have you tilt towards me like this. So, okay. perfect. Oops. We just put that there, so my body's not quite aware of it yet. Um, spray the root spray on the other root area of the section. And then we're gonna dampen it with the bio-rich water, which is also gonna help with shine and protection. It's the top, so it tends to have the most dryness. So we're definitely gonna go a little heavier on our products here. And this is a mist, that's why I need to spray it so many times. It's really called like portion control top because <laughs> not a lot comes out when you spray. I'm gonna do two pumps of glossy after here. And we'll see once it dries if we feel like we could have even used less product, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of don't know until you try for the first time. So squeezing my fingers together when I go through. If I hit a knot, I'm like wiggling my fingers to get it out. I'm not just ripping it out. I'm going to add a little more bubble pomade too because I did not increase that portion. So basically a double portion of what we we're doing in the underneath sections. We get these little tangles here so we have what we do about them. We got to separate them. So massage them out. The brush would just rip that straight out. Those hairs can be set free and survive. They deserve that. <laughs> okay, puffing up here. And you can kind of give it a little shake as you drop it. That'll help any really big clumps gently separate. And then you can come up. Perfect. That's looking great. Let's see, let's show everyone what we've done so far. So shiny and defined, but there's body. Even though it's wet, it's already got volume and curl in the root area. If it's all stuck to your head, it's likely going to dry that way and be straight at the root. Okay, so this section, we're going to do tilt it to the side as well, but just for good measure, we'll go on. I'll go on the other side. So tilt towards me. And it's fine if it come, if I pick up a little bit of hair that's already been styled. Um, everything will combine at some point anyway. Root spray. Oh, I'm gonna divide this up because it's a pretty big section. Let's get it nice and close. And sometimes I like to do like this is we're gonna do double product application on the top. I'll do it this way and then I'll do another round of it the other way just to really confuse the roots and make sure we got everything. That's to get into the bottom of that, so that was, I had to squirt it a couple extra times. Did I spray the bio rich water yet? Um, I don't think so. But we can put it on after. Yep. It's all going to the same place. Nope, gotta wash your hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Heck no. Because they're glass, it's good to wipe your hands before you pick things up because your hands get slippery. I have dropped from oh, elbows, but oh, it they dropped. break. Really? Mm -hmm. You know what breaks is the little plastic top, that's mm. it. The curls are bouncing up in the front. Yes, they're so happy. All right, so flip to the other side. Roll over. Like this? Yeah. Perfect. You can see them like starting to dry, right? Mm -hmm. And bounce up. Yeah, pretty much all the products can also be just put onto dry hair. And just the, you know, the less water you use, just the more 
concentrated the results gonna be. part in mm -hmm. so that, that way you can part it all different ways so the front is like already casted can you feel that mm -hmm. it's already like dry yeah. um so we're putting a little more time into us product application which means but we're going to cut so much time and i'm going to put more product over the top here because that was just too big of a section so now that it's fallen i'm going to just restyle the top before we dry it but we're going to be dry time is going to be like 10 minutes right. instead of maybe an hour depending what you're how you're drying it you know This was the last section, so it had the least amount of water in it by the time we got to it. So I'll probably spray a little water on top as well. It's long. Yeah. <laughs> I've yet to be able to find um, a glass like mist bottle. Mm. Um, like, cause I like the mist versus like too. a spray that's, and now we can take a look around and see if there's anywhere that it didn't bond nicely. We just add a little water to it and then we'll diffuse. Um, I interrupt myself all the time. Got lots of thoughts. <laughs> Too many thoughts, one mouth. So, um, glass say? mister. Yeah, glass mister. But, the thing is, I'm refilling this all the time and I'm never letting it get hot, so I don't need to worry that this is toxic water. Mm. And I'm also not creating a lot of waste because I'm not throwing this away and reusing it on every person, so. But I've been going as far as to um, disinfect all my, I spray with disinfectant all my products, mm -hmm. everything, my bottles, everything. Because I'm touching you and I'm touching it, you know? Right. So I've really taken every, for a caution, I feel possible. Don't reuse these. I wash everything, every towel, every apron that was touched gets washed every day. So I spray and then I also work that water through with my hand. Because we're adding water, I don't have to worry. It's gonna make it straight. The water's gonna make it bounce up. Because your hair is curly naturally. And water, moisture, if the bonds of the hair inside dry in a way that's not curly, that moisture is going to allow them to basically, it's like hitting reset so they can bounce up. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So anywhere that I'm not seeing a lot of bonding, I know I have plenty of product, so I'm just adding water. So it's like restyling before even starting the drying process so that we have, can have more confidence, especially if you're gonna air dry all the way, doing this makes it a lot more likely that it's gonna air dry the way you want it to. When it's soaking, soaking wet, you just have no idea, like you'll be driving or something when it starts to dry, right. you know? When that when it starts to dry, and then it really dries really... however it wants, to, right? It's like whatever position it's in, and then you're like, well, up it goes. Yeah, <laughs> all that effort for nothing. Seriously. Perfect. So I had mentioned earlier about how the longer the product takes to set, to start drying, to basically do what it's supposed to do, the more likely it's going to frizz out. So because we're going to be able, we're going to diffuse all the way to dry. And we're gonna start right away. And if there's any area that tends to get the most frizzy, we're gonna focus on that area first. Um, so if you only have time to diffuse a little bit, there's a little dripping, so I'm gonna just dab a little bit with the towel here. Um, if you know you have a problem area and you only have five minutes to diffuse, get that area as dry as possible. And you do it by hovering. So it's like a quick set. 
Um, some people are afraid to diffuse right away. I used to be. I was. I always advocated for air drying first, so that you could uh, get the cast set without disturbing the hair too much. Until I taught myself how to hover with the diffuser and make that happen faster and with more control over the outcome. Okay, so I have a Dyson, and I like to put it on. Put your dryer on a speed that you can feel the airflow. So I'm gonna be using my hand behind your hair to, make, to feel the, the warmth level, to make sure we're not burning the hair, and to make sure that the air is actually going through because mm -hmm. we're not gonna have it on so high that it's flying around. So there's really no way to know if it's even doing anything unless you can feel it, right? Um, and I'm gonna put it on a medium speed and a low warmth. Just like that. And I'm gonna go here to the side, I'm gonna put my hand underneath. And I'm gonna start with just this motion. Moving the dryer helps it not get too much warmth or too much air in one spot. So keeping it moving is really good. You see the hair's not flying around. But I can feel it on my hand. And I'm using my hand to, you can, by having it in place, you can either stop shrinkage from happening or you can tuck it up and help the shrinkage happen. It depends what you're going for. Because you wanted your hair to be long looking still, we're going to mostly focus on volume in the top. So I'm just going to let it lay on my hand which that's stopping it from bouncing up. But I'm also not gonna like pull it down. Like I can also pinch and go like that and make it longer. But because it's not super, super curly, we don't wanna do that because it'll look straight. You have some ends that look kind of straight. Because we're still doing a haircut after this, but I think this is good to do this first today and see what actually Maybe what we thought needed to come off doesn't necessarily need to come off as much, you know? Right. And I like to work a section until the outside of the hair strands is starting to look dry, so it shouldn't be dripping anymore. And over here, do the same thing. Now after this first round is when we'll start doing deeper tilts to the side. And as soon as you tilt, you're starting to cause separation and we don't want to do that too soon. looking really good at some like good mm -hmm. I know the mirror is so far away here because the cabinets are in front of you. So my clients are sitting like this on my way back too. <laughs> you get the close up. And I like to go underneath a little bit to just pinch and lift the hair to get under there. But also you're doing it yourself, you can just lean and go like that, you know? Okay. And just hover, you put your hand behind the hair and hover like that. Hand, hair, diffuser. However you want to do it, you know? You develop your own, like, routine, you know? Okay. All right, so now I'm going to have you lean deeper this way. Okay. Yeah, like that. And I'm going to let the back, the length, flop this way. And I'm going to gently jiggle the opposite side over. So this is to start getting that root volume. We're going to let the roots fall away from where they're going to lay. And we'll do it to this side and then to the other side. Same thing, cupping up the hair with one hand and covering the beaver with the other.
So when you're doing it on yourself on this side, you probably want to hold with the left hand with the finger and get in there like that. And you can stick your hand in like this, here. Grab it with your left, and then stick your hand under like that. And push, if you need to be pushing it with the back of your hand, and then you just hover the diffuser and keep it moving around. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. Okay. This is really wet down here still, so I'm going to spend a little time down here. So at this point, I'll start touching the hair in different places to see where it's still the most wet to concentrate the time there. Now, if someone didn't want any root volume, they would keep diffusing the way we started. Just hovering and staying upright and not tilting at all. Side, so. Perfect. And then we go over, then the best thing is just taking your hand and going underneath and scooping like that versus running your hands through. Oh, my hair. <laughs> Yay. I'm <laughs> always putting my body in like the most horrible controller positions that are totally unnecessary. Now the reason I don't just flip you upside down is because, first of all, when you're doing it yourself, you're not going to be able to see mm -hmm. and be as aware of what's happening when you're upside down. Um, but we'll finish it that way. But I like to, it's also easier to get more top volume right here because if you go upside down, sorry, I should turn that off. When you go upside down like this, that crown area, it becomes the middle, mm -hmm. all your other hair becomes the center, becomes the perimeter, and that gets all the attention in the top middle. Gravity is the same whether you're upwards or downwards. It's still gravity, and it's still gonna pull those roots. When we go to the side, we're able to give it a little bit of a cupping closer to the root and really get curls up in there. Like your hair's curling like crazy right now. Right. Check it out. It's, it's like beautiful. the old man, but it's like, it's still you. Just the hair to match, you know? Yeah. Now we all just need our faces back, right? <laughs> yeah. So I touch the whole time, and that's because I'm touching with intention. I'm looking to accomplish something with my hand, and I'm being very gentle. So whether I'm looking for moisture, or I'm gonna, or later if your hair's healthier, you might want to shape your roots as it's drying. But well, in this state, I probably wouldn't do that because it would separate the clumps too much. Or I'm directing the hair into position so that I can make sure the air flow gets to it. And if I'm burning my hand, then I'm burning the hair, so it's a great way to know you're being safe. But also, the products I used on you have heat protection, so we wouldn't have to worry, we don't have to worry about that anyway.
most curly products don't offer that because they don't think they're using to, you know? All right, now I'm gonna have you roll forward. Once, when you roll forward, I like to go and so instead of, you know, people have a tendency to like rake their hair forward. Mm -hmm. Instead, just pinch your root and jiggle it to get it to flop forward. It's kind of like t a gentle tossing at the roots. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's so curly. I know. <laughs> Now I'm going to pick up the speed on the dryer since we're getting to the finishing point. I know that the hair is less likely to get frizzy when it's almost dry because we've gently set the task. It feels so soft and white too. So this I call like rolled forward center. So now we're gonna do roll forward to a side, whichever side. So you're still tilting your head forward, but to a side. Perfect, and then I'm gonna flop everything that way. So now we're really getting underneath here. And I'm gonna actually switch to the cool shot of air. So once it's dry and cooled off, it's really gonna be set in position and you would have to get your hair wet um, or extremely hot to change its position. However it fully dries and cools down, that's how it's gonna to wanna to stay. Looking very voluminous. And it's looking like it has a very equal density from root to end, which is a challenge when there's a lot of breakage is that you know you get a few inches down and suddenly the density is much less. But because we didn't overly clump the ends, it's nice and full in the bottom. And then we'll flip through the other way. So now I'll start squeezing to see where there's still water. Because sometimes the hair is dry on the outside, but it's like a sponge, so it might be moist inside. 
and even that little bit of moisture left in the hair means when you go out into that humidity, you're a lot likely for your style to get ruined than if it's completely dry. It's like if you don't finish a blow dry, right? What's gonna happen? It's gonna revert back to what it wants to do and not what you're making it do, right? Now healthy hair won't want to revert to anything. But when we're dealing with damage, we have to like retrain it to be, to act healthy and look healthy, you know? So now we're kind of back at center, which is fine. Get those ends. All right, now hold it there. I'm gonna take the key off. And then you can go ahead and flip up. Woo! All right. Let's check it out. Mm. Hello. Looks good. All right. Definitely need to do a haircut. <laughs> it's a little uneven at the bottom, but that's normal because breakage just doesn't happen uniformly but definitely I've got a lot more definition. You can touch it, Feel it should feel oh, yeah, pretty soft. light. It's pretty shiny. Oh, it's so pretty in the camera. Yeah. <laughs> There's light though. I know, I know. It's like this mirror in the suite uh -huh. for reference. It's like very far away. So you're like, yeah, I do I like it? I can't actually see myself. Yeah, the bus is not gonna have an entire cabinet in front of the mirror. <laughs> and then you can play with the part because we didn't really set one into place. And so when I'm changing parts, I like to go and use my finger like a comb and just gently part and separate so that we're not causing too much curl separation. But we've got all that top volume and curl mm -hmm. and then it's still long because we didn't try to really shrink it a lot. Right. Now down here is what we're gonna cut. Just yeah. like that, boom. And then it will be complete. Let me show the back. Cute. That looks gorgeous. I Thank don't know. You. you can do it, don't say it. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I don't know if I can pull this off. <laughs> of course you can, you're gonna have a whole video to watch over and over and over again. Of I'm your literally own gonna play it on loop. Hair. <laughs> so I'll do my like shower time loop just so I can remember the, the routine you got this no but it's the curls are ringlety and it's okay hard. but you gotta see the back once you do the mirror yeah, yeah grab that okay. i'm gonna try to look maybe in the i don't know if you're oh, looking yeah, the phone I or if you because the mirror oh, there you true. can look in the mirror too check it out yeah shine the light over there yeah. awesome all right, so that is pretty much the close of our styling session. Thank you, Leanne, again for Thank you. being an amazing model and helping me create a video that's going to help lots of people who've been our sisters and brothers in this curl game, like our victim family. <laughs> um, and I think anyone who doesn't have damage might have learned a few things as well, and hopefully um, you guys really enjoyed it. And... Uh, Please read the description for more information about how you can give back in any way that you can uh, to people who are suffering through some diva curl damage. And I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>